Hi guys, it's Lynn with Soft Squares. It is Makers Monday. We're gonna learn how to make this quilt. Today we're going to learn how to make this quilt. It is Makers Monday. It is January 23rd, 2023. I'm going to show you how to make the quilt that is on the wall. I'm going to start out with a charm pack. And this one I'm using is called Hopscotch with all these cute bright colors and just a tiny little print to each one, but it basically reads as a solid. I thought that would be fun. Lots of bright colors. And you're going to need a light and a dark color, and you're going to be doing some cutting. And I had to just double check. These are two inch strips and this is a two and a half inch strip. This right here is a one inch strip. This is a one inch strip. There's only one of these. So this is my own pattern and I made it a while ago. So I'm not exactly sure how much yardage you're going to need. Um, so I'm just gonna tell you how many strips of each color and you can figure out how big you want it to go and what to do. So then I also have these. I have of the same color and these are four. Okay, so let's see. Here's our quilt. Okay, so these are gonna go here. We're gonna make these strip sets. Let's see here, that's not right. Okay, so you see how there's, this is a strip set and this is a strip set. They're exactly the same, but mirror image. Okay, so that's why you have the small ones because this is a small one for this direction and this is the small one for this direction. So you want something with a nice, good contrast. And I think what I did, in fact, now that I do this, I'm pretty sure I know what I did. These four inch strips are gonna be cut down to two inch strips. Two, we're gonna use two. So I have my bigger blocks that will be cut down, but this is how they're gonna be paired up. like that there so now really what we're going to do is we're going to make this strip and then we're going to cut these into five inch pieces and then just sew them on um, both sides of the five inch blocks and just make a bunch of them um, you want to kind of get an idea of the layout that you want for this before you get too involved in that because you're going to be building your rows real quick and then this is your sashing between the row and that's it. So let's see what I did on this quilt. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now this is using one full charm pack to come up with this. So I have six rows this way. Here's our seven. Here's our top and our bottom, which we need three for. Okay, we're good. And then this one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but there's cuts in between. So uh, that's why I think my six sets of six here are gonna work. I'm going to lay these pieces out, get an idea of how I want these to go. This particular configuration using one set is one, two, three, four, five, six by one, two, three, four, five, six seven and i'm using hopscotch by jamie figgle it's called playground it is missouri star quilt company hand picked exclusively for missouri star um i got this one a while ago i don't know if it's available but I love 
all these bright colors and what we're going to get out of it. Okay, so if I did something like this, I want my color separated. Let me get rid of this other quilt so that we don't have as much to look at. Let's play with these. We know what's happening with this. So we're going to do six by seven. I'm just curious what I have to work with here. You know what I could do? I could just lay them out in order of how they are here and just let it go like that. What I don't like though is I have some duplicates but not all of them are duplicated. Oh, actually, I take it back. I'm seeing two of everything so far. That actually changes things. Oh, yeah, two, two of everything. I decided how I'm gonna do this. <laughs> We're gonna do that. And here's the quilt. So it's six across by seven down, but it's actually almost square because of the way the borders are here. So now I'm gonna make my strips. I'm gonna sew going to cut the wider strips in half and put the smaller strip in between them. I'm going to do both the light and the dark sets and then cut the light sets up into five inch pieces and pair them up with the pieces that are over here in the order that they are over here. And they are going to get the light set on both the right and the left side as far as the margins. Do you see what I'm talking about? Get out of the way. <laughs> so just put one on one side. Just remember you need one extra one for the other side when you're all done. Okay, so let's get that far. made a really long strip with all of my colors. Now, it's more important that you do this step with the dark strip that goes between the rows. You don't have to do it with this one because this one you're cutting down into five inch strips, so whatever is easier for you. But for me, my blue fabric was about an inch shorter than my light fabric. And so I just wasn't lining my ends up and I felt like I could get more fabric out of it. And I ended up with a good size scrap left over from this because of how I joined it. And I don't have seams at the same place on both sides. So I got one there and one there. So instead of being across from each other, 
anyway, so that's why I did what I did here, but um, this one doesn't matter as much as the other one does. Now I need a five inch strip and this is a six and a half inch. Let's get a five inch ruler. I love this ruler, it's Missouri Star. I could be cutting on the board. I, I don't know, I usually cut um, using my ruler more than anything. And I have this much left over, which actually would be really cute on a pillowcase or something. I don't know. Hold on to that. Okay, so now to make the other set. Oh, wait. I'm not going to worry about the other set right now. I'm going to pair these up with the guys on the wall. This. Okay, so I've numbered my rows. And now I need to keep them in order. And it's good if I can keep them in order when I sew them. But I'm going to add this to the side of each each piece and go through and do the whole each row at a time and keep them in order um, I could mix them up and it doesn't matter because I have taken pictures this is where taking a picture ahead of time is really helpful even if you think you have it straight <laughs> things happen so I'm gonna go through and um, add that little strip to the right side of everything here and then also add an additional strip over here so the, the beginning is going to have one on both sides and then everything else will be on the left and that's what's going to give it this look right here okay and then I'm going to join the rows and then once I know how long the row is I will cut these to size I'm going to still have to make this strip but make the strip and cut it to size and then join my rows and then all that's left is to put a border around it, which I don't know if I have. Hmm. I don't know if I have enough of the fabric I'm working with to do that. I have enough to frame the top and the bottom. This is just fabric I had cut before that I don't think I realized I we'll see if this where this goes <laughs> I might put a different color or leave it this off on this side I like the overall frame but I definitely like the fact that these blocks are um, framed that way let's see where this goes Okay, so now that I've got all of those, I am going to pin the row together. Can't go anywhere. These are my rows. They have been put together. I left my numbering on there. And as you can see, they're hung up in reverse order. And to be honest, it doesn't matter as long as you're okay with how it ends up in the end. And I ended up with the seventh row on top when I was pressing and put my rows together. So it went up in the wall first. So when I put it together, I will either reverse it and change its order or I'll leave it just how it is. But my, my thought on this is um, start over here. If you follow your eye, it zigzags. Sorry, I'm not very good with the camera. It zigzags going back and forth and back and forth there we go and it ends here so as far as my pattern goes it's just if I want to start in the top left or the top right so anyway that is the layout of mine and now I'm going to assemble my opposite strips as you can see the other quilt is right there in the corner and um, so I'm going to make the dark strips now which will be the dark blue with the light blue and I am not going to cut those up. I'm going to make one big long strip 
and then measure the length of, I guess, the width of the, the rows here so that I um, cut my strips the, the right length. So they're going to be um, the equivalent of one row. And I'm going to cut seven of those, no, six, one between each of the rows, six rows of the dark. And then I have a separate lonely strip of just the blue here that will be going on the top and the bottom, which will frame it really nice. And then we will see what I have left to work with. We're going to now join these rows. <laughs> Let's see how long they are. Okay, it's 47 and a half is how long each row is. So I have now pieced together my mirror image or opposite rows. I guess it's not really a mirror image, is it? And now I'm going to cut these into sections of 47 and a half and then sew them between my rows. And I need six of these right now. So there's seven rows and they're going to go right here between these. And then after that, we're going to see what fabric we have to work with. Um, in our original one, which is right here, you can see that there's a box that goes around this using this darker fabric. So it's just the equivalent of one of these smaller strips put at the top. I cut this fabric out for this a while ago, and I don't have any more of the extra fabric. So I'm not exactly sure if I have enough to do what I need to do, meaning to go around all four sides. I do have enough extra. I should be able to do the top and the bottom. Just not sure if we're gonna have this. So it'll, we'll see what happens and what other ways this can come together if that's the case. So this is what I had left over from that. I also have this, which is, I'll have to check. I think it's almost three strips, three and plus a little extra of just that. So after I get these on, I'm gonna see how much I need and then take the light blue off of here so I can get more. And you know what, we might, <laughs> we'll have to see. We might get what we need. But right now, let's join our rows. Guess what? I cut five, I needed six. I don't know what I was thinking. So I do need this piece. I also need a little bit more of this. I do have some scraps of that. Um, this is what I have left. And unfortunately, oh no, we'll be, well, <laughs> yeah, I can cut a long enough strip off of here. And then I have this. The bad thing about this is I'm going to have seams that all line up unless I stagger them a little bit, which I shall do.
All right, I now have my sixth strip. That's why you save your stuff until you know you're done. My own pressing. Now I'm going to join them. Notice I'm leaving my numbers on here because I learned the hard way not to take them off until I'm done, especially if the whole quilt has a pattern because I have built things backwards and random and upside down. And Anyway, lessons from me. So seven is the bottom strip. Seven and six go together. I'm just going to hook these two together. Do the same thing where I match them up, sew with this side up, press it open, and four and five actually can go together. So I'll do that. And I've already sewn one and two together, and then three is just hanging out right there. As I'm pitting these together, you want to find the middle, but more importantly at this stage, you want these lines to line up. Because this is so small, it's actually more noticeable. So this is what I'm using as my center, not the real center, in case it's different. I don't know if that made any sense, but I want to keep my rows from shifting. And I'm going to do this all the way across, actually, to all of these. I'm pinning it where it lines up with the other row, not easing it in the normal way where you center it and then keep centering it. I want to make sure my stripes go where they should go. And see, we're, we're doing it. Um, over here, see how you really want to do your best to line these up. So, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. There we go. This one. Do you want to double check to make sure your rows are in the right order? Four is on top of five. Let's look at this one. I have taped, yeah, there we go. Sewn things upside down with six above seven or seven above six, and we're doing good. So, again, we're going to come. Well, I know I want my ends, so we'll start with the ends and then we'll go to the center where we're lining the lineup. Here's my center. Whatever way it, it takes to get that lined up, however it works. You wanna not worry about the others, unless you have a ton of slack, which you shouldn't. But it's this skinny little line that you are going to see when things don't line up.
is done as far as the center of the quilt. Let's compare them side by side. So this one has the double borders and the binding. So this does not have either one of those. I do not have enough of this fabric to go around this like I did here. But I do want to put something around it, either that or I could finish it off just how it is and leave it. Either add a border, um, or a frame. To me, this is more of a frame and then the border. Or leave it, but I wouldn't want to put, I don't know. Let me give it some thought as to what I'm going to do next. The dimensions of this quilt are 47 and a half by 48 and a half, so it's one inch longer. It's basically square. So, and who says you have to orient it this way? You might want just to turn it the other way and it's pretty cool either way. I can take these off. Let's look at it without the numbers. Okay, I'm done. This is the finished quilt. I'm not gonna worry about any borders. I do not have enough fabric of this to make the border like I did on this one. And so I'm just gonna leave it how it is. Uh, perhaps later, if I do a border, I will add this to it. I really like this. It goes really well, especially with these blues. I like it. What do you think about it? Please comment, let me know. And look for the pattern. It will be in my Soft Squares website. Um, if I have it done today, it'll be there. If it's not, please keep looking back for it. And when it's finally done, you will see it. I'm just gonna sit on it for a little bit and see if I really wanna add the border or not. Um, I kinda like it how it is. That's why I'm leaving it for now. But if I did add a border, it would look like that. I think I could do a wide one, just like how this looks. And actually, the more I do that, the more I like it, cause it just really draws your eye out where right now it's kind of jumping around trying to figure out where to look but to me this helps to focus that's just my my thought this gives you an idea of what that might look like <laughs> let me know in the comments if you if i should do the border or not because i'm really indecisive right now but that's it for today <laughs> I will see you soon. Thanks for being here.